Hello everyone, this is Teacher Juvi and I will be your guide for today's lesson. Today, we will learn about equivalent ratios. A ratio is a relationship between two numbers or items, usually involving some kind of measurement. For example, when people drive, they travel at a certain speed. We usually refer to that speed as miles per hour. That is a ratio because it shows a relationship between distance and time. Let's study the pictures below. So we have pictures of frogs and pictures of chickens. So if we're going to compare the number of frogs to chickens, we will get 8 is to 10. So, ang ratio ng frogs to chickens ay 8 is to 10. And we already uh, discussed that 8 is to 10 can also be written in fraction form, which will become 8 over 10. At diniscuss din natin nung nakaraan, ang, ang ratio can also express as ratio in lowest form. So, 8 is to 10 will become 4 is to 5. Paano natin nakuha ang 4 is to 5? So, kinuha natin ang kanyang GCF na 2 and i-divide natin yung dalawang terms sa GCF na 2 to get 4 is to 5. And 4 is to 5 can also be written in fraction form which will become 4 over 5. So, what is the relation between the two ratios in the previous part? Let us reduce the ratios to lowest terms by dividing the both terms of each ratio by their GCFs. So, ito yung aking discuss kanina na ang 8 over 10, kapag i-divide natin sa kanyang GCF na 2, makukuha natin ang ratio in lowest term na 4 over 5. So, A over B is equal to C over T, C over D. Yung A over B natin dito, yung 8 over 10. Tapos yung C over D natin dito is yung 4 over 5. So in the equality of ratios, A and D are the, are the extremes. Yung A and D natin ang tinatawag nating extremes, while B and C are the means. Okay, take note that A over B equals C over D can be written as A is to B equals C is to D. Okay, yung ating B at C o yung in innermost terms natin, tinatawag natin siyang means. While yung outermost uh, terms natin, ang tawag natin dyan ay extremes. So, yun yung katumbas niya sa fraction form. Yung A, D, yun yung ating uh, extremes. Tapos yung C and B, yun naman ang ating means. Okay, so why is it important na alam natin yung part ng means at ng extremes? So in equal ratios, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So ibig sabihin daw, kapag minultiply natin yung means natin, yung 10 and 4, pag minultiply natin yan ay 40. Dapat equal din yan sa product ng ating extremes. So, yung A times 5, pag minultiply natin, will also be resulted to 40. So, that means na ang 8 is to 10 is equal sa 4 is to 5. Therefore, uh, they are equal ratios. Okay, so let's try this activity. Write equal symbol in the circle if the given pair of ratios are equal and not equal naman kapag hindi sila equal. Okay, so for example, uh, we have this ratio 64 is to 12 and 80 is to 15. So, paano natin madedetermine kung sila ba ay equal or equal ratios? So, gamitin natin yung rule na the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So, i-multiply natin yung ating means na 12 and 80. So, 12 times 80 is 960. Then, we also multiply the extremes, yung 64 and 15, 64 times 15 is 960. Therefore, yung 64 is to 12 and 80 is to 15 are equal ratios. 
Okay, next. How about if the fra if the ratio is in fraction form? So let's say three over seven and twenty four over fifty six. So how can we determine na equal sila? So ang gagawin natin yan is gagamit ay ng cross multiplication. Imo multiply natin itong three and fifty six. Three times fifty six is one hundred sixty eight. Then imo multiply naman natin ang seven and twenty four. So, ang sagot ay 168. Since we get both 168, therefore, we can say that 3 over 7 and 24 over 56 are equal ratios. Okay, another 6 over 7 and 75 over 100. So, sila ay naka-fraction form. Gagamitin natin is cross multiplication. Cross multiplication. So we will multiply six times one hundred. That is six hundred. Then multiply seventy-five times seven. That is five hundred twenty-five. So ibi ah hindi equal yung nakuha natin product. Therefore, ang ah six over seven and seventy-five over one hundred. Are not equal ratios, so gagamit tayo ng an equal symbol. Okay, let's so let's try another activity. Fill each box with the correct number that will make equivalent ratios. So ngayon naman, meron tayong hahanapin number, so missing yung isa sa mga terms ng ating ratios. So may nawawala ng isang extreme. So anong gagawin natin? Since present ang ating dalawang means, i-multiply natin ang ating dalawang means. So, 7 times 24 is 168. Then, saka natin i-divide yung ating nakuhang product doon sa isang extreme. So, 168, i-divide natin sa 56, that is equal to 3. Therefore, the missing extreme or the missing term is 3. So pag minultiply natin ang 7 times 7 and 24 that is 168 then i-multiply natin yung 3 times 56 that is also equal to 168. So yun yung pag-check natin kung tama ba yung ating sagot. So yun yung tinatawag nating uh, equal ratios, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Okay, another example is 8 is to 3 equals Uh, missing number then 15. So nawawalan tayo ng isang means. So ang gagawin natin since parehong may pair ng extremes, pareho tayong may extremes, i-multiply natin siya. So 8 times 15 is 120. Then yung nakuha nating product, i-multi i-divide natin sa ating uh, given means. So 120 divided by 3 equals 40. Therefore, the missing term is 40. So check natin. Three times forty is one hundred twenty, and eight times fifteen is one hundred twenty. So equal ratio na siya. Okay, so let's try this. Twelve is to ah nawawalang term equals fifteen is to five. So ang gagawin natin since present yun dalawa nating extremes, imo multiply natin siya. So twelve times five is sixty. Then, i-divide natin yung ating product sa isang means to get another mean. So, 60 divided by 15 is 4. Therefore, the missing means is 4. So, i-check natin kung tama ba ang at kung proportion or equivalent ng ating ratio. 4, is to 5, uh, 4 times 15 is 60 and 12 times 5 is 60. So, equal ratios na sila. So let's apply equivalent ratios in solving the following problem. So we have two numbers are in the ratio two is to three. If the bigger number is six, what is the smaller number? So we are looking for the smaller number. So let n be the smaller number. Then isulat natin ng ating our ratios as two is to three equals n is to six. Yung n yung ating smaller number na nawawala. Then to find the missing number or the smaller number, since present yung ating dalawang extremes, imo multiply natin yung ating extremes. So two times six is twelve. 
Then, i-divide natin ang product sa isang means. So, 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Therefore, 4 is the smaller number. Then, i-check natin kung tama ba ang ating sagot. The product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So, 3 times 4 is 12 and 2 times 6 is 12. So, check. Okay, next problem. What number compared with 8 is the same as 6 compared with 24? So, inahanap natin dito yung number na pag kinumpara natin sa 8 ay kapareho siya ng pagkukumpara sa 6 and 24. So, let n be the number. So, ito yung magiging ratios na, uh, equivalent ratios natin. So, n is to 8, which is the nawawalang number. The missing number is n is to 8 equals 6 is to 24. So, 8 and 6, yung means natin yung para, uh, may pair. So, yung multiply natin yon. 8 times 6 is 48. Then, i-divide natin yung product doon sa ating isang extreme. So, 48 divide mo sa 24, that is equal to 2. Therefore, 2 is the number. Okay, another problem. There are 18 roses for every 6 roses. How many roses are there if there are 3 roses? So, for every 18 roses, merong 6 roses. So, let n be the number of roses if there are 3 roses. So, ito yan. 18 is to 6 equals yung n is to 3. So, since present yung ating dalawang extremes, multiply natin yon. 18 times 3, that is 54. Then, we will divide the product by 6, yung isang means natin. 54 divided by 6 equals 9. Therefore, there are 9 roses for every 3 roses. Next problem, there are 7 children for every 2 adults in a plaza. How many adults are there if there are 21 children? So, inaanap natin yung number ng adults if there are 21 children. So, uh, let n be the number of adults. So, we have 7 is to 2, yung comparison ng children for every 2 adults. Then, equals 21 yung children. Dahil nauna yung children, so, unahin natin isulat yung 21, then is 2n, which is the missing or the number of adults. So, since present ng ating dalawang means, multiply natin yan. 21 times 2, that is 42, and divide the product by 7, and we will get 6. Therefore, there are 6 adults in or if there are 21 children. Okay, so let's have another uh, problem. Two numbers are in the ratio 3 is to 5. If their difference is 12, what are the numbers? So, ito mas complicated na dahil dalawang numbers yung ating hahanapin. So, may dalawang number, ang ratio nila is 3 is to 5. Ang difference nila is 12. So, ano ngayon yung dalawang number na yon? Okay, so let A and B the two numbers or let A and B be the two numbers. So, ang ating magiging uh, ratio or equal ratios ay gantong itura. 3 is to 5 equals B is to A. So, ito yung nawawala nating dalawang number. Then, isulat din natin yung ating expression para sa dif, uh, if their difference is 12. So, kung ang difference nila is 12, yung A, babawasan natin ng B, dapat equal sila sa 12. Okay, so ang gawin natin, 3 is to 5 equals B is to A. Kunin natin yung uh, product ng 5 and B. So, that is 5B. So, yung product ng means, kunin natin. Then, kunin din natin yung product ng ating extremes. So, 5 times B is 5B and 3 times A is 3A. Then, i-divide natin. Para bilang ang matira, i-divide natin yung 5B sa 5. Then, i-divide din natin itong 3A sa 5. So, makakancel yung 5, B na lang ang matitira. So, yung B is equal to 3A over 5. Okay, next step, hahanapin natin yung A. So, we have A minus B equals 12. Then, A minus, yung nakuha nating uh, value ng B kanina na 3A over 5, isa-substitute natin dito sa 
equation na a minus b equals 12. So, a minus 3a over 5 equals 12. Then, gawin natin yung parang pag, uh, pag-subtract ng, uh, ng fraction. So, ang denominator natin ay 5. So, may uh, imaginary 1 dito sa ilalim ng a. 5 uh, times 1, that is uh, 5 divided by 1 is 5. Then, multiply natin sa a, that is 5a. Then, 5 divided by 5 is 1 times 3a, that is minus 3a. Then, equal natin sa 12. So, pwede na natin silang pagsamahin dahil same naman ng kanilang variable. 5a minus 3a, that is 2a over 5 equals 12. Next. 2a is equals to 60. Paano natin nahanap yung 60? Kinross multiply lang natin. Then, 2a, divide natin yung 2a sa 2. Para makancel, a lang ang matira. Then, i-divide din natin itong 60 sa 2. So, 60 divided by 2 is 30. Therefore, ang ating ang value ng a is 30. Next. So, hahanapin naman natin yung b. Paano? Doon sa nakuha natin uh, equation kanina na b is equals to 3a over 5 para madali nating mahanap yung b, isa-substitute natin yung nakuha nating a kanina na 30 sa equation na 3a over 5. So, 3 times 30, then over 5. 3 times 30 is 90, divide mo sa 5, that is equal to 18. So, ang nakuha nating value ngayon ng A and B is 30, ang A and B naman is 18. Okay, let's do the checking para malaman natin kung nasatisfy ba natin yung condition dito sa problem. So, sabi, dapat daw ang kanilang difference is 12. So, pag minus natin yung 30 minus 18, that is equal to 12. So, check na satisfy natin yung condition na ang difference is 12. So, satisfy naman natin yung ratio na uh, 3 is to 5, then 18 is to 30. Dapat, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes para masabi natin equal ratio sila. So, 5 times 18 and 3 times 30, that is equal to 90. So, tama ang ating sagot na ang nawawalang numbers ay 30 and 18. Thanks for watching this video. Hit like if you learned from this video and don't forget to subscribe on my channel. Thank you so much.